USPS just joined as well. Oh, excellent. Well, thank you, Mr. Kuo. Welcome to the first, the first meeting. We appreciate that. We'll, we'll be uh, uh, having you introduce yourself uh, uh, later on. Appreciate it. Look, looking forward to, to joining this group. Thank you, sir. We look forward to having you. This is Rosemary Edson Carnero. I don't think I can get the recording to start. It may have to be you, not me. Okay, I'll do it. Do we have the recording figured out, Edson? Yes, just waiting for OK to start. OK. And uh, uh, Scott, I think you can start letting uh, folks in. And uh, Greg, just give it another minute, and uh, we should be ready to go. Very good. Edson, go ahead and start the recording. Everybody's in, Greg. Excellent. Thank you, Scott. And by my clock, I show that it's uh, one o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So uh, we will begin the uh, Access Board meeting. And with that said, uh, welcome everyone who is present in today's meeting. My name is Greg Ferrybach, and I am the uh, Chairman of the United States Access Board. And we are welcoming you to the January uh, 2022 meeting of the Access Board. And uh, thank you for your participation and look forward to, to a good meeting for the day. Uh, at this time, uh, it is my pleasure to call or actually to ask uh, Rosemarie to uh, give the roll call. Rosemarie. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Rosemary Access Board. And I am going to start the roll call with Ms. Uh, with Housing and, I'm sorry, Health and Human Services, Allison Barkoff. Karen Breitmeyer. Present. Patrick Cannon. Department of Defense, Gilbert Cisneros. This is Randy Cooper uh, reporting for Mr. Cisneros, uh, proxy to the chair. Thank you. Department of Justice, Kristen Clark. Christina Galindo Walsh for AAG Clark, proxy to the chair. Thank you. Department of Commerce, Wynn Coggins. And for the record, I do have a proxy for Department of Commerce to the chair. Gregory Fairback. Present. Mark Guthrie. Present. Christopher Hart.
Uh, President. General Services Administration, Katie Kale. Present. U.S. Postal Service, Benjamin Quo. Present. Matthew McCullough. Here. Department of Education, Katie Knees. I'm here too, folks. Victor Pineda. Present. Howard Rosenblum. Present. Deborah Ryan. Present. Shelly Siegel is not here. Karen Tamley. Present. Department of the Interior. Present. That's Roxy, the chair. Uh, Department of Transportation. Department of Labor, Taryn Williams. Department of Housing and Urban Development, Janine Warden. Bud Lays on Rex Pace is present. Veterans Affairs. Uh, liaison Mark Goler, present and proxy. Okay, I will go back to Housing and, or, I'm sorry, Health and Human Services, Allison Barkov. Present. Uh, thank you. And Patrick Cannon. Patrick Cannon. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a quorum. Thank you very much, Rosemary. I appreciate that. And uh, also for all of the uh, people attending on the screen, uh, be advised that we have two forms of interpreting opportunities and options for you. Just pin your choice and uh, if we, uh, that, will, that should be able to accommodate uh, any of your needs uh, that, we, uh, that we have. So, and also too, if you have questions, please don't hesitate to ask us. We will be happy to accommodate your particular needs that, uh, for the day. All right. Uh, after the roll call, we do see the quorum is met. And uh, with that, we have the opportunity to have the approval of the November 10th, 2021 minutes. Those minutes have been provided in your packets. And uh, if you've had a chance to review, I uh, at this time would like a motion to approve the minutes of the November uh, 20, November 10th, 2021 minutes of the Access Board. Yes, Chris. Motion to accept. Been moved. Second. Been moved Second. and accepted. Moved by uh, Christopher Hart and uh, seconded by Matt McCullum. Are there any questions or amendments to the motion and or the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any objections? Aye. Opposed, same sign. All right. We have unanimous approval of the minutes. Thank you all. Uh, at this time, I'm going to call on our uh, chief executive, uh, Sachin Pavlin, for the executive report. Sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, before I start my report, I, I do want to acknowledge a new member of the board that we have present today. Uh, federal member from uh, USPS, United, uh, U.S. Postal Service, uh, Mr. Benjamin Kuo. Uh, Mr. Kuo, if you want to introduce yourself, make a couple of remarks. Sure, I appreciate that, Sachin. So yes, my name is Ben Kuo. Uh, I just joined the Postal Service uh, in October of 2020, so very new addition here at the Postal Service. Uh, previous to that, um, I, I had uh, over a decade of service at Toyota Money Manufacturing both in the engineering plan as well as the manufacturing headquarters uh, involved with construction across the entire North American region. Um, then spent about 10 years at Cornell University, uh, lastly as Associate Vice President of Facilities Management there, uh, managing uh, the 16 and a half uh, million square feet campus there. 
And then the last couple of years, I was serving lastly as vice president of planning and facilities management at Georgetown University. So just across town here in DC, um, uh, running basically the facility services and leading both the real estate, capital construction, uh, energy, and, and other associated operations for the campus. Uh, I'm looking forward. Uh, one of my career goals has always been to serve in public service. So joining the Postal Service uh, has been a highlight for my career. I'm looking forward to also meeting uh, many of you throughout this for this very important work uh, as we want to make sure that we provide the best possible service to the U.S. public. Uh, so again, I'm very honored and appreciate and, and, and humbled to join this group uh, and looking forward to becoming part of the board. Thank you, Ben, and we look forward to working with you as well. Uh, the Access Board has had a long uh, standing relationship with USPS and look forward to working with you. All right, with that, uh, well, first of all, Happy New Year, everyone, and uh, uh, welcome to our January board meeting. Uh, I want to start off with our audit report that uh, came out a, a month ago, and uh, we have a, a clean audit. I want to thank our um, thank my colleague Jeff Sargent, who has done a great uh, great work in making sure our books are in order and our finances are on order. So appreciate Jeff's work uh, over the years and uh, in making sure our audit was taken care of. The audit report is available on our website if you would like to review it. Um, I also want to acknowledge Mr. McAuliffe, the chairman of our budget committee, who also uh, gives us direction on our budget related items. So uh, thank you, Jeff and Matt. Um, one touch on rulemaking. Uh, so our, our fall, fall unified agenda was published on December 10th. And, and that is some uh, that is something you can uh, view on reginfo.gov, R-E-G-I-N-F-O.gov. Uh, we are making a lot of we are making a lot of progress on ProAg, uh, public rights of way, accessibility guidelines. That uh, is our highest priority. Like I say, has said always, we've been making good progress. We're consolidating comments that we have received from. Uh, partnering agencies. And our hope and our goal is still to have a final rule by the end of this, uh, this year, 2022. We're working on an ANPRM for self-service transaction machines. Our hope is to have that uh, uh, ANPRM published by the spring. Once this is uh, published, it will be working on the uh, accessibility guidelines on self-service transaction machines, which, uh, which will amend um, our ADA and ABA guidelines. Uh, we have also been working on our uh, medical diagnostic equipment rule. There's one provision that is pending on our uh, MDA guidelines that was issued in 2017. Our hope is to have that provision, which, which will finalize the minimum standard for seat transfer height. That our goal is to get that wrapped up uh, pretty soon as well. We, we just wrapped up the research uh, the, uh, on this particular issue and we'll be, you'll be hearing more information coming uh, in the future and uh, what we'll be working on as far as wrapping up that one provision that's, uh, that's pending in that rule. L last month, we held a jo joint public hearing with Department of Transportation. Uh, we, were, we were working on uh, seeking guidelines, uh, see seeking additional comments on onboard wheelchairs. One of the pieces that we're looking for, information we're looking for is the size for our cast, the caster wheels on the wheelchair and the appropriate load uh, weight for these wheelchairs. The common period is still open. It's, uh, the, it closes on January 15th, 17th, this, so this coming Monday. So if you haven't commented yet, or if you know individuals who would have the information uh, that we're seeking, please do encourage them to uh, submit their comments. Ex executive orders. Uh, 
we've been working on several executive orders uh, that has uh, come out under this administration. Uh, some of the ones that we have been focusing on has a direct Im impact on equity and accessibility and also outreach with uh, tribal nations. Uh, these, I just want to highlight, uh, Access Board has been heavily involved in uh, trying to build relations uh, with other departments, but also outreaching with uh, uh, other entities that work directly with tribal nations so we can build uh, those relations so uh, our resources and information can be shared with uh, individuals uh, in, in the tribal community, tribal nations, so that um, we can ensure accessibility and help guide uh, whatever accessible barriers that might exist. Uh, with the executive order 14035, the DEIA, that's a diversity, equity, uh, inclusion, accessibility executive order. Uh, we are uh, working with several inner, uh, several agencies and uh, sitting on several inner agency conversations to ensure um, accessibility is in the forefront of all discussion uh, and also uh, emphasizing the importance of our ABA standards, Architecture Barriers Act standards, so that uh, federal spaces are accessible. And while talking about ABA and our strategic plan as well, one thing that we have been, we have been looking in inwardly uh, for the last several months is how to modernize our internal processes and our uh, technology. We are taking a look at our ABA system uh, uh, to, uh, to replace our existing system that tracks our ABA complaints. Uh, where we will be releasing our new system once uh, the process is uh, completed for procurement. Our hope is to have that uh, accomplished uh, sometime this year, which, which will also meet all the 508 uh, compliance as well as all the cybersecurity requirements that we are, um, we're required to meet. Um, as far as ABA complaints, since the last meeting, since, uh, since early November to end of December, we have received about 39 ABA complaints and about uh, 37 complaints were closed in the last two months. Um, technical assistance and training, we continue to provide uh, technical assistance. Since the beginning of this fiscal year, we have provided about 1,000 technical assistance of various uh, issues and trainings. Also, we continue to provide via webinars uh, that, uh, that we have every month. Uh, when uh, when requests do come in for training so uh, technical assistance, we do uh, so right now they are being provided virtually. Um, hopefully, with uh, once COVID is behind us, there will there will be more opportunities of in person training that the staff will be doing. Um, one event I do want to highlight. Uh, that the Access Board was part of in December is the Smithsonian uh, National Museum on National, uh, National History. Uh, uh, Bill Barton on our staff was uh, involved in the ribbon cutting of uh, an accessible entryway that was, uh, that was installed. And uh, we appreciate the Smithsonian taking accessibility as a, a, a key component in everything that they do. And we appreciate them advancing accessibility in, the, in, in, in all the work that they do. Um, one other event that I was involved in in early December, December 3rd on International Day of uh, People with Disabilities, I was invited by uh, the UAE government, by the, the Dubai government to be a speaker at the Global Expo 2020. I was joined by with uh, public member, Dr. Victor Pineda, uh, where we uh, had a great dialogue and we uh, presented on the importance of accessibility, but also the importance of working collaboratively to uh, make sure all spaces are accessible. Um, Dr. Pineda and myself had some great conversation with uh, folks at the expo and the uh, remarkable changes that is happening in Dubai 
uh, when it comes to accessibility and uh, universal design. A um, couple of uh, staff uh, updates I want to bring to all of your attention. Um, last December 31st, our general counsel, uh, uh, Gretchen Jacobs, retired. And with her retirement, we have uh, the board has uh, nominated and appointed a new general counsel. I do want to welcome Mr. Christopher Kaczynski, who is our new general counsel. Um, we are excited that Chris has joined us uh, on our team uh, as the general counsel prior to this position. Uh, Chris served as the deputy general counsel at the Access Board. Before that, uh, he uh, served at the EEOC and then also the Department of Justice as a trial, trial lawyer. We, everyone on the Access Board is very excited and pleased to work with uh, Chris and at this time, I want to give an opportunity to uh, Mr. Kaczynski to uh, make a couple of comments. Chris, if you're available. Hi, good afternoon. <clears throat> good afternoon. Uh, and thank you, Sachin, uh, for recognizing me for just one minute. I know there's a full agenda. Um, it is a, a honor and privilege uh, for, to have been uh, first for uh, the chairman, Greg, to have nominated me. Uh, for the position of general counsel and uh, for the board to have placed its confidence in me in uh, this position. I first became aware of the access board in the early 1990s when I started as a trial attorney with the Department of Justice and we had a number of people who were former access board employees who had come over to the Department of Justice the disability rights section. So um, I always <clears throat> I had enormous respect for those individuals and enormous respect for the kind of work that the Access Board uh, has done uh, over the years, and it is uh, it, it's great to be a member of <clears throat> a member of the team uh, and to work alongside uh, just a great group of people, both on the board and uh, full-time uh, staff uh, employees uh, who are as committed uh, and as mission-focused on. Uh, the issue of accessibility for individuals with disabilities. So I'm looking forward to making uh, what contributions I can in support of the great work that the board does. So thank you very much. Thank you, Chris. Um, and my last update on staff, and this one is uh, kind of difficult to share. And uh, we, uh, we have uh, another retirement announcement coming up. And uh, it seems like there's more retirements <laughs> coming down the pipe. Uh, this individual is a, is a good friend and a great colleague. And, um, and um, uh, he has announced his retirement. Uh, Mr. Dave Yanchulis uh, announced that he will be retiring uh, end of April, April 30th. Uh, Dave has uh, served for the federal government for uh, over 36 years. He's been with the Access Board since uh, he started as a student in 1985, but he came on board uh, as a, a full-time employee in 1988 and has been heavily involved in the various aspects of uh, the, the rules that we have put on. Uh, he's, he's, uh, he's had different hats throughout the 36 years he's been with the board. He's, uh, he's worked on the ADA, initial ADAG uh, guides. He's a, he worked in updating our websites. He worked as a compliant officer. He's, Dave, Dave has done it all at the Access Board, and he has a huge wealth of knowledge and is well-respected in the community for the work uh, that we do. And Dave is going to be definitely missed uh, once he retires. So I, I want to give Dave an opportunity to address the board and the public. Well, well, thank you, Sachin. I really appreciate those remarks. And I would just like to let, let everyone know that when I first made my way to the board as a junior in college in need of part-time work, I had no idea at the time that it would open the door to my entire career in government. Uh, but I'm so very thankful that it did. Uh, it's just been a wonderful, wonderful journey. Uh, I'm, I'm grateful beyond words for all the opportunities that working at the board has given me. And to be part of the change, to make our world a more inclusive, 
an accessible place. And to consider all that we've accomplished together over the past three decades is tremendously rewarding and also very humbling. Um, in all my years at the board, the work has always remained interesting, varied and deeply fulfilling. Uh, there was always a wonderful mix of new assignments and challenges year after year, month after month. And the one thing that remained constant though throughout that time um, was really <clears throat> the quality, talent and dedication of all the people I was privileged to work with. Because the board is not, not just an agency, but also a family and I will certainly miss working there. Uh, but on the other hand, I am very glad to make room for someone else to have the incredible opportunities that I've had at this wonderful agency that is like no other. Uh, thank you, Sach, and I'm going to turn it back to you. Thank you, Dave. Um, as I said earlier, <clears throat> Dave is definitely going to be missed. He has huge uh, knowledge base in, in the work that we've done and he has uh, he's well respected in our field and in the in our community so thank you Dave for your 36 years of service uh, with the board um, we will be announcing uh, the position uh, hopefully next week um, to start the search and uh, please look out uh, in our various uh, channels uh, newsletter and social media for the job announcement to come out. Um, with that, my report uh, concludes, Ms. Chairman, unless there's any questions, I turn it back to you. Thank you very much, Sachin. Do I have any questions uh, for our executive director? All right, I, I too would like to just A, uh, thank Dave for his service. I've, been able to work with him for five years and I can't imagine uh, the things that he knows. So the institutional knowledge and uh, his skill set that he leaves the board with is going to, uh, we're going to miss that. But I think as our executive director says, he'll give an opportunity as well as Dave saying uh, a new person to come in and, and, uh, and fill that gap. And I'll bet you that uh, Dave will be around if there's any questions. So thank you, Dave. And uh, uh, again, welcome to Chris, uh, our board as general counsel. We, we certainly appreciate you taking on that challenge. And uh, thank you, Sachin. Uh, we are being led by a great executive director and uh, the board is in a, a good position. So thanks to everyone for that. We are now scheduled to move on to our standing committee reports. Uh, and uh, uh, look forward to those, uh, and we will begin with uh, uh, our uh, technical programs in just a moment, too. Uh, Mr. Quo, by the way, I, I was supposed to remind myself to have you ha have an introduction, so I apologize. Uh, sometimes you get in the flow, but uh, I, too, would like to welcome you uh, to the board uh, and uh, uh, outstanding resume that you have. So uh, thank you. And, uh, and again, uh, on behalf of, uh, of the board, welcome. And we look forward to working with you over the uh, next uh, several moments. Thank you. Yes, we appreciate it. Thanks for the warm welcome, Greg. Oh, pleasure. Thank you. All right. Uh, technical programs. Uh, Chris Hart and Bill Button. Uh, okay. Great. Thank you. On Monday, the, te te the technical programs committee met and we received a brief update from staff on the technical assistance program, which Sachin agreed to in his update. I, the staff have handled over 890 requests for technical assistance in the first quarter of the year. The inquiries continue to be predominantly phone and email uh, by source. 
Second, we received an update on the training program as you might be aware before provide hundreds of training opportunities a year to thousands of folks and with COVID this has all moved to virtual trainings and webinars. In the first quarter we have had over four thousand participants in our trainings and we have an upcoming webinar in two weeks. Check the access for website for the for the registration link for that webinar. That concludes my report. Unless there are any questions. Are there any questions for Mr. Hart? All Greg, right, so, sir. Greg, if I write a more personal note, uh, I think as someone that's been on the board for over 10 years, and as someone that's worked in the field for over 20, I am still trying to wrap my head around not being able to call Dave and do this in a couple of months time. I am frankly it's also going to be a little disappointing to not have my Yuri Dave and to this visit in Boston. For those who don't know I Dave was always the go to representative for the war when we did trainings in Boston. Uh, and he and Deb Bryan have been a tag team for, for decades doing an ADA update for the local Boston Society. Of architects, and it's just it's a little shocking to realize that David's actually going to retire. I never thought that would happen. So I wish you the best, Dave, and I know we got you for a couple more months, so I'll, I'll bug you before. This is Dave Anchulis. I just want to say thank you, Chris. And what a pleasure it's been to work with you and uh, everyone else on this call, this meeting over the years. And Chris, yes, please stay in touch. I welcome all of you to stay in touch too after my last day. Very good. Thank you and thanks to everyone for the uh, good work on the technical committee. I believe I saw uh, Ms. Sarah Morrison. Did you have your hand up? Was I missing that? All right, I will stand down on that comment. And there's and, no hands uh, up, Greg. I'm sorry? There's no hands up. No hands up, okay. Sarah did have, Sarah, there you are. Do you have, go ahead. Thanks, hi, I'm Sarah. Um, I'm having a bit of an access issue with the interpreting service. I'm wondering if the interpreter with the blue screen could move back a little. Her uh, body position is a bit too close to the screen. It's too, Sheila, close to go, it's too close to me to back. Sheila, if you'd move back. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. All right. Very good. Sheila, keep moving back. Move backwards a little bit, please. Excellent. I think that's better. If not, uh, for folks using the service, please let us know. 
All right. Next up on our agenda is the planning and evaluation committee uh, chaired by Karen Tamley and uh, staffed by uh, uh, Francis Spiegel. Karen. Great. Thank you. Uh, the planning and evaluation committee met briefly on Monday. Uh, we discussed the 2022 out of town meeting that we're going to hold on September 13th through the 15th in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The board reviewed a uh, itinerary that had been prepared for us um, back when we had planned to have our out of town visit in May of 2020. Um, unfortunately, that was uh, postponed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The committee discussed ideas for updating the events in light of the board's new strategic plan and our focus on outreaching underserved communities. Staff is going to take the recommendations um, under advisement and work to finalize an itinerary for the September trip. So we'll be providing more updates um, at future board meetings. And that concludes my report. Are there any questions? All right. Any questions? To, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I was just going to say, um, hearing none, uh, Greg, I'll turn it back to you. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate that. Sergeant? Mr. Chairman, I just, I just want to make a note that so we got a couple more board members that has joined uh, since the roll call, just for, for the record. We have Mr. Patrick Cannon, and uh, we have Mr. Jan Williams from the uh, Department of Labor that has joined us. Excellent, thank you very much. And thank you uh, for joining us, folks. Uh, we appreciate that and uh, look forward to uh, moving on with our next, uh, next item. So thank you. And if you have any questions, please let, let us know and we can uh, make it available to you uh, as soon as possible. Thank you. All right, our next uh, standing committee report is the budget committee chaired by uh, Matthew McCullough and uh, staffed by uh, Mr. Jeff Sargent. Matthew? Good, uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Happy New Year. So, uh, so we will be talking about two fiscal years, um, FI22 and FI23 this afternoon. In terms of the current fiscal year, the, um, the export is currently, um, currently working with a budget of $9,750,000. And, and we need to also realize that the federal government is currently working on a, a CR, a continuing, a continuing resolution. And that was passed back on December 3rd. But, um, but to date, the export has spent $1,796,509, which resembles 18.4% of the $9,750,000. Um, knowing that the current CR goes to, goes to February 18th, um, the export has says uh, approximately $3.5 million to cover any activities going through February 18th. Um, so hopefully the um, the United States Congress will, will either pass a full budget for the federal government or, or continue passing an LCR beyond the, Fe the February 18th date. Um, so that's where we are on, on the FR22 budget. Um, let's talk about the FR23 budget. Um, so the S board submitted their budget for FR23, FR23 in the amount of ten million ninety thousand five hundred dollars. Um, we were hoping to receive the pass back from the Office of Management and Budget at the end of December. Um, however, we're still waiting to receive our pass back for FI 2023, knowing that the president is about to submit his budget to Congress um, early next month. We, um, the export does anticipate that OMB will give us 
some sign of a passback shortly. And that's where we are on if I try and turn three. Are there any questions regarding the the two the two fiscal years and the budgets? Hearing none, Kim and Greg, um, that is my question. Thank you very much. Take care, guys. Thank you, uh, Mr. McCall. I appreciate the work goes into that uh, budget process and your excellent job in keeping us surprised on that. So thank you. Next up is the uh, frontier issues of the standing committee. And uh, Mr. Howard Rosenblum is uh, going to share, has shared that and uh, staffed by Mr. Tim Craven. Uh, Howard? Thank you, Chair. Yesterday, the Committee on Frontier Issues met. And at that time, the board reviewed topics of potential present of, of presentations that have been given to the committee in prior meetings. Conversation then ensued with committee members in terms of potential topics related to developing technologies for future meetings, along with recommendations for specific speakers. That discussion is ongoing. Members are encouraged to send any suggestions or recommendations to myself as chair of the Frontiers Committee or the staff liaison, Tim Cregan. We will develop a list of speakers and topics for the upcoming year. And we will share that information at a future meeting of the committee. If there are no questions, Chair, that concludes my report. Thank you, uh, Committee Chair Rosenbaum. We appreciate that. And uh, seeing none on the questions, we will go ahead and then move on uh, to our next uh, report. And that is the uh, Election Assistance Commission, uh, which is uh, co-chaired by Mr. Mark Guthrie and Mr. Pat Cannon, uh, staffed by Mr. Bruce Bailey. Uh, Mark or Pat, who's uh, up first? Mark, looks like you are. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, and uh, uh, best wishes to Chris and, and to Dave. Uh, uh, Dave's uh, retirement sort of remind, reminds me that uh, uh, not drawing a comparison, but it reminded me of a former board member who passed away in September, and that was uh, Marilyn Golden. I think we may have uh, mentioned Marilyn in a previous board meeting, but um, I just happened to think of her here with uh, Dave's retirement because I know that he worked uh, closely with Marilyn too. Uh, Mr. Chairman, again, thank you. Uh, uh, as you all know, um, Pat Cannon of uh, Michigan and I represent the board on the Elections Assistance Commission Board of Advisors and its Technical Guidelines Development Committee or uh, TGDC. Um, the committee is, is or our, our liaison service is staffed by Bruce Bailey and we're always grateful for all that Bruce does to be helpful. Um, at the November board meeting, I reported uh, on the October meeting of the TGDC and their feedback and uh, support for the next version of the voluntary um, voting systems guidelines known as VVSG 2.0. Uh, uh, related to that activity, the EAC recently published a draft VVSG lifecycle policy for public comment uh, uh, should be available on their website. The policy uh, proposes the formal process for updating documents and voting systems from VVSG 1.0 to 2.0. Uh, we do not have dates set for the next uh, EAC advisory board meeting or 
the TGDC meeting. Uh, Mr. Chairman, unless there are questions, that concludes my report. Uh, thank you very much. And again, thanks uh, to Bruce Bailey and my uh, longtime Access Board colleague, Pat Cannon. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Guthrie, and thank you, Mr. Uh, Cannon. We appreciate your efforts uh, on the uh, Election uh, Assistance Commission. Good work for making sure there's accessibility for people with disabilities as it relates to voting. Very important job so thank you all right uh moving on to the uh ad hoc committee on design guidance uh with uh Ms. karen breitmeyer uh as chair and staff by scott uh, winley uh karen thank you mr chair um the the design guidance team uh, at our meeting on Monday, presented the latest draft of the Chapter 7 Signs Guide. This guide is nearly ready for circulation among Access Board staff for edits before distributing to board members for review. The team has focused recently on providing improved access to the guides for those that use screen readers in the following ways. First, to make all notes and labels related to images readable by screen readers. Second, image dimensions and labels are now more descriptive and do not require seeing the image to understand the context. Third, invisible notes were added that can only be seen by screen readers. These notes detail information for those using screen readers to better understand the context directly related to image notes. For example, images are prefaced, begin image notes, and end with end image notes. And this allows for image alt text to be more understandable and focused on describing the image. The design guidance team continues to welcome any input that you might have and asks that be shared with uh, Scott Windley at windley at access-board.gov. So thank you very much. And if there aren't any other questions, that ends my report. Thank you, Karen. And thanks for the committee's work on that. Uh... The uh, review of that was uh, excellent uh, earlier this week, so we appreciate that. All right. Um, are there any new business matters uh, that need to be brought up uh, to the board? Mr. Pazrun, I believe I see your... Yeah, uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I failed to add one item to the agenda and this could fall right here. Where Any updates from our federal members, if they would like to share from the age, so any agency updates that any of the federal members would like to share to the board. Thank you. You'll have time in the future too. We'd love to hear from you now if you have anything. And if not, you know, we meet again in March uh, to our federal board members uh, who are very essential to, uh, to our, uh, uh, group and uh, board. All right. Uh, seeing none, thank you. And most importantly, uh, I'd like to thank the federal board members for their uh, continued attendance. We are doing a very good job uh, of uh, having a quorum now. And uh, so thanks to your efforts. I know it takes time. So uh, we, uh, we here on the board appreciate working collectively with you all and uh, uh, you're essential to, uh, to our work. And so I, we're grateful, thank you. Any other new business or business that needs to be brought up to the board? All right, and uh, this then concludes uh, the official- Mr. Chairman, this is Pat Cannon. Mr. Cannon, please. Oh, I, my microphone is being a little flaky today. 
at our next meeting in March is that when we'll have a chance to vote yay or nay on accepting David Yanchulis's resignation for retirement. I, 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 I yes, Mr. Keenan, I think that we will have a rigorous review of that uh, uh, position that he may present to us. So yes, uh, we will be able to uh, uh, review his uh, 36 year tenure in depth at that point. So uh, that is correct. Anything further? All right, then this concludes our official um, business meeting for the uh, January 10th, or it's not, it's January 12th, and uh, of the United States Access Board. Uh, and again, my name is Greg Freibach, and uh, I thank everyone for uh, joining us today. Uh, and do I have a motion for adjournment? So moved. It's been moved. Is there a second? Second. second. Moved and seconded. Thank you. And we uh, show this meeting adjourned. Appreciate it. See everybody uh, in March online. This is Rosemary Access Board. Thank you, Denisha, Sheila, Jackie, and Marion. And to our captioner, um, Krista, thank you for coming and helping us out. We are officially adjourned. Thank you.